Hi, it's Katrin Parker. Um, I'm back with Let's Read Twilight, Life and Death. Um, as always, I'll be reading this chapter sight unseen, so you can you can travel with me through the horror of it. Um, so where we left off last time, uh, Bo and Edith are in Seattle. Um, no, Port Angeles, sorry. Or Seattle. I I don't care. Doesn't matter. And um And they've just been to a restaurant where Edith has bullied Bo into eating. There's actually quite a good article out there somewhere about how um Bella's refusal to eat um is like the only power she has in her relationship with Edward basically. I can't remember. I can't remember anything about it, just thinking it was quite interesting. More so than this. Alright, they're in their car. And, um... And he was allowed to ask her a question, and she said she can read minds, apart from his, because he doesn't have a mind. Uh, and now it's his turn to answer the question, and the chapter is called... Chapter 9, Theory. I kind of already want to give up. I think this is a record. No, nope, soldier on. Let's go. <clears throat> Can I ask just one more? I stuttered quickly as she accelerated much too fast down the quiet street. By one more he means a question. So I was in no hurry to answer her question. She shook her head. We had a deal. It's not really a question, I argued. Just a clarification of something you said before. She rolled her eyes. Make it quick. <laughs> You're gonna be hearing that a lot, Beaufort. Well, you said you knew I hadn't gone into the bookstore and that I'd gone south. I was just wondering how you knew that. She can read minds. We just went over this. We just went over this. <sighs> she thought about it for a moment, deliberating again. I thought we were past all these evasions, I said. She gave me a kind of you-asked-for-it look. I don't know. One of those. Fine, then. I followed your scent. That's not creepy. I didn't have a response to that. I stared out the window, trying to process it. Your turn, Bo. But you didn't answer my other question. Oh, come on. That is her, that's in the text. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm serious, you didn't tell me how it works, the mind reading thing. Can you read anybody's mind anywhere? How do you do it? Can the rest of your family do the same thing? It was easier to talk about this in the dark car. Because it's insane. You guys should get really drunk and talk about it all. I don't think he, Edward Edith can. That's sad. The streetlights were behind us already. And in the low gleam from the dashboard, all the crazy stuff seemed just a little more possible. If it seemed like she felt the same sense of non-reality, like normality was on hold for as long as we were in this space together. Her voice was casual as she answered. Nah, it's just me. It's just casual as I can make it. And I can't hear anyone anywhere. I have to be fairly close. The more familiar someone's voice is, the farther away I can hear him. But still, no more than a few miles. She paused thoughtfully. It's a little like being in a huge hall filled with people, everyone talking at once. It's just a hum, a buzzing of voices in the background. Until I focus on one voice, and then what he's thinking is clear. Most of the time I tune it all out. It can be very distracting. And then it's easier to seem normal, she frowned as she said the word when I'm not accidentally answering someone's thoughts rather than their words. Why do you think you can't hear me? I asked curiously. Well, we all have a theory on that bone. We have since you were Bella. And it's always been the same theory. Sorry. She stared at me, eyes seeming to bore right through mine with that frustrated look I knew well. <laughs> 
I realise now that each time she looked at me this way, she must have been trying to hear my thoughts and failing. <laughs> Her expression relaxed as she gave up. There's nothing in there. You, you're listening to a seashell. It's not really the ocean. Anything you think you can hear is just coming from you. That's pretty sad. Do I take these breaks just to recalibrate my brain? Maybe. Oh, sweetie. Okay. Alright, you gonna sit here? This is Felicity. Come on, Dean. Come on if you're coming on. Oh, position this so you can see us both. She's the important one. Aren't you, buddy? Oh, look! We can see her. Don't put it down too low or you'll turn the computer off. I think this is the best you're getting, I'm sorry. Um, Edith has just given up trying to hear both its thoughts because of course she has. I don't know, she murmured. Maybe your mind doesn't work the same way the rest of theirs do. Like your thoughts are on the AM frequency and I'm only getting FM. She grinned at me, suddenly amused. I didn't understand either of those things, because I was born after Kurt Cobain died and I've never seen a radio. That was a really sad and weird um, marker of time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, oh, I've just been distracted because this this cat <laughs> she puts her claws in keep your spikes in your feet <sighs> she knows I don't mean it my mind doesn't work right I'm a freak her speculation hit home I'd always suspected as much and it embarrassed me to have it confirmed Bo is the furthest thing from a freak possible. He goes home, he does all his homework, he cooks dinner, washes the dishes, and he goes to bed, and then he gets up and goes to school again. Like... It's not the behaviour of a freak, really. I mean, actually, I guess it is. It's more like a robot. I hear voices in my mind, and you're worried that you're the freak. She laughed. Don't worry, it's just a theory. Your face tightened, which brings us back to you. I frowned. How was I going to say this out loud? I thought we were past all these evasions, she reminded me softly. Using his own words against him. Nice. I looked away from her face, trying to gather my thoughts into words. And my eyes wandered across the dashboard, stopped at the speedometer. Holy crow, I shouted. Because I had already pre-given up any hope of having sex with this girl, or any other girl, or anyone, or an object. <laughs> Holy crow. <laughs> Holy crow. I forgot about this in, um, in Twilight. It's just something people say. Uh, what's wrong? She asked. You are a freak. Looking right and left rather than straight ahead where she should be looking. The car didn't decelerate. You're doing 110! I was still shouting. I shot a panicked glance out the window, but it was too dark to see much. The road was only visible in the long patch of bluish brightness from the headlights. The forest along both sides of the road was like a black wall, as hard as a wall of steel if we veered off the road at this speed. Yeah, but it is still a forest. Like, because you see it as a black wall, it's not going to hit you like a wall of steel. It's going to hit you like a bunch of trees. Just saying. Relax, Bo. She rolled her eyes, still not slowing. Are you trying to kill us? I demanded. We're not going to crash. 
I carefully modulated my voice. Why are we in such a hurry, Edith? I always drive like this. She turned to flash a smile at me. Although, to be fair, my mum drove like that and, um, and she was not a vampire. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the road. I've never been in an accident, though. I've never even got a ticket. She grinned and tapped her forehead. Built-in radar detector. Hands on the wheel, Edith. She sighed, and I watched with relief as the needle gradually drifted toward 80. Happy. Almost. I hate driving slow, she muttered. This is slow. Enough commentary on my driving, she snapped. I'm still waiting for you to answer my question. I forced my eyes away from the road in front of us, but I didn't know where to look. It was hard to look at her face, knowing the word I was going to have to say now. My anxiety must have been pretty obvious. It's all like shaking, and he's like, Ugh. He's like grabbing at his hair. I grab my hair a lot when I get like super, super anxious. Some of it comes out, but as you can see, that's not really a problem. I promise I won't laugh this time, she said gently. I've said that before. <laughs> and it's always a lie. Sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm not worried about that. Then what? So you'll be upset? I'm happy. She lifted her hand off the gear shift and held it out toward me. Just a few centimetres. An offer. I glanced up quickly to make sure I understood and her eyes were soft. Don't worry about me, she said. I can handle it. Handle it! Because she gave him her hand. Ah, oh, I'm really warming up to Edith. There's a girl with a sense of humour. And a love for teenage boys. A mixed bag, Edith Cohen. I took her hand and she curled her fingers very lightly around mine for one short second. And then dropped her hand back to the gear shift. Carefully, I placed my hand over the top of hers again. Oh my god, it's starting. I ran my thumb along the outside of her hand, tracing from her wrist to the tip of her pinky finger. That was a little bit sexy until he said pinky finger. Her skin was so soft. Not that it had any give at all. No, but soft like satin. Smoother even. She's a mannequin. Spence is killing me, Bo, she whispered. Sorry, I don't know how to start. I've heard that before too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm desperate for, for the double entendre to make this bearable and possible. So I I hope that you enjoy watching a grown up child read a book and giggle at words that aren't actually that naughty. Another long moment of silence, just the purr of the engine and the sound of my hitching breath. I couldn't hear hers at all. I traced back down the side of her perfect hand. That's not how you start. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just imagining him sitting there, like, petting her hand. Like it's, oh, we're allowed to hold hands now because we're going steady. So I'll just, just give it a knuckle. <laughs> oh my god, I've only done a few pages. <clears throat> Why don't you start at the beginning? She suggested, she suggested her voice more normal now, practical. Is this something you thought up on your own? Or did something make you think of it? A comic book, maybe, or a movie. Nothing like that, I said. But I didn't think of it on my own. Yeah, she knows. She knows you didn't. She waited. It was Saturday, down at the beach. I risked a glance up to her face. She looked confused. Confused. 
confusion. I ran into an old family friend, Jules, Judy Black. Her mom, Bonnie, and Charlie have been close since before I was born. She still looked confused. Bonnie's one of the Quailute leaders. Her confused expression froze into place. <laughs> it was like all the planes of her face had suddenly hardened into ice. Oddly, she was even more beautiful like that. <laughs> A goddess again in the light of the dashboard dials. She didn't look very human, though. <laughs> she stayed frozen, so I felt compelled to explain the rest. There was this quiet woman on the beach, Sam something. Logan made a comment about you, trying to make fun of me. And the Sam said your family didn't come to the reservation. Only it sounded like she meant something more than that. Jewel seemed like she knew what the woman was talking about, so I got her alone and kept bugging her until she told me. Told me the old Quailet legends. I was surprised when she spoke. Her face was so still and her lips barely moved. What were these legends? What did Jules Black tell you I was? I half opened my mouth and closed it again. What? I don't want to say it, I admitted. It's not my favourite word either. Her face had warmed up a little. She looked human again. Not saying it doesn't make it go away though. Sometimes I think not saying it makes it more powerful. Oh my god, she's Voldemort. The story just took a turn. Fifty shades of Voldemort. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I just grossed myself out. Which is not, you know, doesn't happen a lot. She flinched. Nope. Saying it out loud didn't make it any less powerful. Funny how it didn't sound stupid anymore like it had in my room. It didn't feel like we were talking about impossible things, about old legends or silly horror movies or paperback books. It felt real. Like a hardback. And very powerful. We drove in silence for another minute, and the word vampire seemed to get bigger and bigger inside the car. It didn't feel like it belonged to her, really, but more like it had the power to hurt her. I tried to think of something, anything to say to erase the sound of it. Before I could come up with anything, she spoke. What did you do then? Oh, um, I did some research on the internet. And that convinced you? She was very matter-of-fact now. No, nothing fit. Lots of it was really stupid. But I just... I stopped abruptly. She waited and then stared at me when I didn't finish. We've all been there, right? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <clears throat> you what? She pushed. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? So I just let it go. Her eyes grew wider and wider and then suddenly they were narrowed into little slits glaring at me. Like that. I don't want to point out to her again that she could probably be watching where she was going, but her speed had crept up past 95 now, and she seemed totally unaware of the twisting road in front of her, ahead of us. Um, Edith. It doesn't matter, she half shouted at me, her voice going shrill and almost metallic. It doesn't matter. No, not to me anyway. You don't care if I'm a monster, if I'm not human. No. Finally, she stared at the road again, her eyes still long slashes of anger across her face. I can't make my eyes any longer, I'm sorry. Well, I could, but it would be extremely racist. I'm not going to. I don't know what you're waiting for. 
I could feel the car accelerating under me. You're upset. See, I shouldn't have said anything. I mumbled. She shook her head and then answered through her teeth. No, I'd rather know what you're thinking. Even if what you're thinking is insane. Sorry. She blew out an exasperated sigh and then it was quiet again for a few minutes. I stroked my thumb slowly up and down her hand. What are you thinking about now? She asked. Her voice was calmer. Um, nothing, really. It drives me crazy not knowing. I don't want to, I don't know, offend you. Spit it out, Beau. I have lots of questions. But you don't have to answer them, I'm just curious. About what? How old you are? Never ask a lady her age, Beaufort. Seventeen. Same. I'm also seventeen. In real life. Yup. About to turn sweet eighteen. Oh my god, I'm so glad I'm not seventeen anymore. I stared at her for a minute, till half her mouth twitched up in a smile. How long have you been seventeen? I asked. A while, she admitted. I smiled. Okay. She looked at me like I'd lost my mind. This was better though. Easier with her just being herself, not worrying about keeping me in the dark. I liked being on the inside. Her world was where I wanted to be. Don't laugh, but how do you come outside in the daytime? She laughed anyway. Myth. The sound of her laughter was warm. It made me feel like I had swallowed a bunch of sunlight. My smile got bigger. Burned by the sun? Meth. Sleeping in coffins? Meth. She hesitated for a moment and then added softly, I can't sleep. It took me a minute to absorb that. At all? Never, she murmured. I feel you, Edith. I really do. She turned to look at me with a wistful expression. Although when I can't sleep, I don't go out and sneak into a teenage boy's room and stare at him all night. Although. I'm not thinking of a teenage boy, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the Supernatural Brothers. I would totally do that. What is wrong with me? I'm sorry, you guys... I know I say this nearly every video, but you guys do deserve better. Then again... You're making me do this. <laughs> so like it or lump it. You bozos. <sighs> she turned to look at me with a wistful expression. I held her gaze, my eyes getting trapped in her golden stare. After a few seconds, I'd completely lost my train of thought. Suddenly, she turned away, her eyes narrowing again. You haven't asked me the most important question yet. The most important question? I echoed. I couldn't think of what she meant. Aren't you curious about my diet? She asked, her tone mocking. Wow, never ask a lady about her diet either. Mine is mostly like dead birds and pizza. It's not ideal. Oh, that one. Yes, that one. She said bleakly. Don't you want to know if I drink blood? I winced. Well, Jill said something about that. Did she now? She said you didn't hunt people. Your family wasn't supposed to be dangerous because you only hunted animals. She said we weren't dangerous. Her voice was deeply skeptical. Not exactly. Jill said you weren't supposed to be dangerous. But the Quilo still didn't want you on their land, just in case. She looked forward, but I couldn't tell if she was watching the road or not. She'd put on a pair of those giant novelty sunglasses with the bars across them that Kanye used to wear, long ago. Oh, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't say that at all. So was she right? About not hunting people? I tried to keep my voice as even as possible. The Quilots have a long memory. She whispered. I took that as confirmation. 
please. This is a story that somebody's great-grandmother told them. My great-grandmother told me that her dad used to take her into town and sit her outside the opium den. Yes, the local opium den with a bag of lollies and tell her not to tell her mum and then he'd go in and smoke opium and he'd come out again and she'd finish her lollies and and they'd go home and she wouldn't tell her mum. So it's not that hard to hear stories from your great-grandmother is, is what I'm saying. I mean, it is now because all mine are gone, but... You know, it's not impossible for these things to come down. I took that as a confirmation. Don't let that make you complacent, though, she warned me. They're right to keep their distance from us. We are still dangerous. I don't understand. Of course you don't, Beaufort. How could a vampire who can push a van away from you and do whatever other crazy shit and read minds and whatever, how could they possibly be dangerous? Nonsense. <sighs> we try, she explained. Her voice got heavier and slower. We're usually very good at what we do. Sometimes we make mistakes. Me, for example, allowing myself to be alone with you. This is a mistake? I heard the hurt in my voice, but I didn't know if she could too. A very dangerous one, she murmured. We were both silent then. I watched the headlights twist with the curves of the road. They moved too fast. It didn't look real. It looked like a video game. I was aware of the time slipping away so quickly like the black road underneath us, and I was suddenly terrified that I would never have another chance to be with her again like this. Openly, the walls between us gone for once. What she was saying kind of sounded like goodbye. My hand tightened over hers. I couldn't waste one minute I had with her. Tell me more. I didn't really care what she said. I just wanted to listen to her voice. She looked at me quickly, seeming startled by the change in my tone. What do you want to know? Tell me why you hunt animals instead of people, I said. It was the first question I could think of. I know hormones make teenagers really stupid. I mean, they make adults pretty stupid as well, but teenagers are just psychotic. But he's asking the dumbest questions. The dumbest questions. Why do you hunt animals instead of people? Oh, I don't know. Because people tend to remember it when a vampire sinks their fangs into their neck and, like, sucks all the blood out. And then later on, they're like, oh, there's the vampire who did that to me. <sighs> or, like, people's bodies turn up dead. And then it's not really the same when it's an animal. Or they don't like killing people. If I ever meet Bo, like if Bo is real, I'm going to get a tiny stepladder, because I'm not very big, and I'm going to climb up the stepladder and whack his face really hard. Just haul off and slap him. I might have to practice. I don't know. If I get, like, if I get the stepladder too close, it's not going to work. These are the things, these are the things we think about when we're chronically mentally unemployed. Anyway. Ah, oh, tell me why you hunt animals instead of people. It's the first question I could think of. My voice sounded thick. I double blinked the extra moisture from my eyes. He's crying because his girlfriend doesn't eat people. Her answer was very low. I don't want to be a monster. But animals aren't enough. She paused. I can't be sure, but I'd compare it to living on tofu and soy milk. We call ourselves vegetarians. Our little inside joke. It doesn't completely satiate the hunger. Or rather thirst. But it keeps us strong enough to resist. Most of the time. The tone darkened. Sometimes it's more difficult than others. Is it very difficult for you now? I asked. She sighed. Yes. I would also find it difficult not to rip out Bo's stupid, 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 fucking, boring, stupid throat. So, I'm with you, Edith. 
But you're not hungry now, I said, stating, not asking. Why do you think that? Your eyes. I have a theory about that. Seems like the colour is linked to your mood. And people are generally crabbier when they're hungry, right? She laughed. You were observant than I gave you credit for. I listened to the sound of her laugh, committing it to memory. So everything I thought I saw that day with the van, that'll happen for real. You caught the van. She shrugged. Yes. Just a van. How strong are you? She glanced at me from the side of her eye. Strong enough. Like, could you lift 5,000 pounds? She looked a little thrown by my enthusiasm. Uh, if I needed to? But I'm not much into feats of strength. They just make Eleanor competitive, and I'll never be that strong. How strong? Honestly, if she wanted to, I think she could lift a mountain over her head. But I would never say that around her, because then she would have to try. She laughed, and it was a relaxed sound. Affectionate. Were you hunting this weekend with, um, Eleanor? I asked when it was quiet again. Yes. She paused for a second. I need my hand back. She doesn't say that, but she's probably thinking it. What if it's molesting her hand? I'm saying it to Felice. She's using it mine for a pillow. She paused for a second, as if deciding whether or not to say something. I didn't want to leave, but it was necessary. It's a bit easy to be around you when I'm not thirsty. Why didn't you want to leave? It just makes me anxious to be away from you. Her eyes were gentle, but intense. No, don't know. And they made it hard to breathe in and out like normal. I wasn't joking when I asked you not to try not to fall in the ocean or get run over last Thursday. I was distracted all weekend worrying about you, and after what happened tonight, I'm surprised you did make it through a whole weekend unscathed. She shook her head and then seemed to remember something. Well, not totally unscathed. What? Your hands? She reminded me. I looked down at my palms at the almost healed scrapes across the heels of my hands. She didn't miss anything. I fell. Yeah, that's what I thought. Her lips curved at the corners. I suppose being you, it could have been much worse. And that was the possibility that tormented me the entire time I was away. It was a really long three days. I really got on Eleanor's nerves. Three days? Didn't you just get back today? No, we got back Sunday. Then why weren't you at school? I was frustrated, almost angry as I thought of how much her absence had affected me. Well, you asked if the sun can hurt me, and it doesn't, but I can't go out in the sunlight, at least not where anyone can see. Why? I'll show you sometime, she promised. Yeah, because... Because it's so dumb. I, I mean, being a Twilight vampire actually seems fairly cool. It's a lot of upsides. Not that many downsides, but the sparkling would be so embarrassing. So embarrassing. I I don't know if I can handle it. Also, never sleeping. Like, I don't sleep well at night, but sometimes a lot of nap during the day. I would miss that. Then I'd probably just tear a deer apart with my hands. Like it was fresh bread. Not a deer. A man. And that would probably make me feel better. Right, sorry. <clears throat> what we're talking about. <sighs> I thought about it for a moment. You could have told me. She was puzzled. But I knew you were fine. Yeah, but I didn't know where you were. I... I hesitated, dropping my eyes. What? Her silky voice was as hypnotic as her eyes. I love these bits. This kind of sounds stupid, but, well, it kind of freaked me out. I thought you might not come back. That 
somehow you knew that I knew and I was afraid you'd disappear. I don't know what I was going to do. I had to see you again. My cheeks started heating up. We know what that's code for, Bo. She was quiet. I glanced up. She looked pained like something was hurting her. Edith, you okay? Uh, she groaned quietly. This is wrong. I know. I went out with a 20 year old and, um, and I was pretty much thinking that a lot. It was wrong. 30 and 20. That's too big an age gap. It was so wrong. And not like in the fun way. Anyway, I couldn't understand her response. What did I say? Don't you see, Bo? It's one thing for me to make myself miserable, but a whole other thing for you to be so involved. She turned her anguished eyes to the road, her words flowing almost too fast for me to understand. I don't want to hear that you feel that way. It's wrong. It's not safe. I'll hurt you, Bo. You'll be lucky to get out alive. Yeah, I've said that before too. <laughs> Oh, we have fun. We have fun, don't we? I don't care. It's a really stupid thing to say. Maybe, but it's true. I told you, it doesn't matter to me what you are. It's too late. Her voice whipped out, low and sharp. Never say that. It's not too late. I can put things back the way they were. I will. Just move away now, like before you're going out with him. Sorry, I have to change position sometimes, otherwise my leg starts giving me. Ow, 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 ow. That was not a muscle on my leg. That was a beast with spikes inside its legs. Hold for lace. Yeah, you did, didn't you? She always does that when she jumps. When she's been sitting on me and she jumps off me. She always, always digs her claws in. I know she doesn't have to do that. She knows she doesn't have to do that. Anyway. I stared straight ahead. Glad again for the scarf. My neck was a ma mass of crimson splotches, I was sure. I don't want things back the way they were. I mumbled. I wondered if I was supposed to move my hand. I held it still. Maybe she would forget it was there. <laughs> she knows you're still holding your hand, Beaufort. She does. No. I'm sorry I've done this to you. Her voice burned with real regret. The darkness slipped by us in silence. I realised the car was slowing, and even in the dark I recognised the landmarks. We were passing into the boundaries of Forks. It had taken less than 20 minutes. Well, according to my clock, it's taken nearly 40, but that's mostly me just yelling and stuff. Will I see you tomorrow? Do you want to? She whispered. More than anything else I've ever wanted. It was pathetic how obviously true the words were. So much for playing hard to get. <laughs> she closed her eyes. The car didn't deviate so much as half an inch from the centre of the lane. Then I'll be there, she finally said. I do have a paper to turn in. She looked at me then and her face was calmer, but her eyes were troubled. We were suddenly in front of Charlie's house. The lights were on, my truck in its place, everything totally normal. It was like waking up from a dream. The kind you didn't want to lose. The kind you kept your eyes closed tight for. Rolled over and covered your head with a pillow for trying to find a way back in. She shut the engine, but I... She shut off the engine, but I didn't move. Save me a seat at lunch? I asked hesitantly. I was rewarded with a wide smile. Well, that's easy enough. You promise? I couldn't keep the tone light enough. I promise. I stared into her eyes and it was like she was a magnet again, like she was pulling me toward her and I had no power to resist. I didn't want to try. The word vampire was still there between us, but it was easier to ignore than I would have thought possible. Her face was so unbearably perfect, it hurt in a strange way to look at it. 
At the same time, I never wanted to look away. I wanted to know if her lips were as silky smooth as the skin of her hand. Suddenly her left hand was there, palm forward an inch from my face, warning me back, and she was cringing against the car door, her eyes wide and frightened and her teeth clenched together. I jerked away from her. Sorry. Yeah, we've all been there too. Don't worry, Bob. It's just a thing that happens. She stared at me for a long moment, and I would swear she wasn't breathing. No shit. I thought we'd got to, you know, the V word. Vampire. After a long moment, she relaxed a little. You have to be more careful than that, Bo, she said finally in a dull voice. Cautiously, like I was made of glass or something. Her left hand lifted mine off her right and then let it go. I crossed my arms over my chest. Maybe, she began. I can do better than that, I interrupted quickly. Just tell me the rules and I'll follow them. Whatever you want from me. She sighed. Seriously, tell me to do something and I'll do it. Boys. I regretted the words a second that were out of my mouth. What if she asked me to forget about her? There were some things that weren't my power to do. But she smiled. Alright, I've got one. Yeah, I asked, wary. Don't go in the woods alone again. I could feel the surprise on my face. How did you know that? She touched the tip of her nose. Really? You must have an incredible sense. Are you going to agree to what I ask or not? She interrupted. Sure, that one's easy. Can I ask why? She frowned, her eyes tight again as she stared out the window past me. I'm not always the most dangerous thing out there. Let's leave it at that. There's this three-legged house cat, and it doesn't sound like much, but she is really scary. She'll jump up on a tree stand, and she'll just look at you, and you'll be like, Oh my god. Oh my god, this is it. A superior animal has cornered me, and I'm going to fucking die. No, that's not in there. That's just my cat, Fatha, who's quite happily sitting on a lovely royal blue cushion. Aww. She's trying to make the carpet die. By looking at it. She's a honey. The sudden bleakness in her voice made me shiver, but I was relieved too. She could have asked for something much harder. Ooh, ooh, missus. <laughs> what did you say? She sighed. I'll see you tomorrow, Bo. I knew she wanted me to leave now. This kid's a genius. I opened the door unwillingly. Tomorrow, I emphasized. I started to climb out. Bo? I turned and ducked back awkwardly and she was leaning toward me, her pale goddess voice just... face, just inches from mine. My heart stopped beating. Sleep well, she said. Her breath blew into my face. It was the same compelling scent that haunted her car, but in a more concentrated form. I blinked, totally stunned. She leaned away. Some of the details are a little weird. And all of the big things are weird as well. It took me a few seconds to my brain unscrambled and I was able to move again. I backed out of the car, having to use the frame for balance. I thought she might have laughed, but the sound was too quiet for me to be sure. She waited till I'd stumbled to the front door. And then her engine quietly revved. I turned to watch the silver car disappear around the corner. It was suddenly really cold. Yeah. Yeah, Bo. Because you're out of the car and it's night time. I reached for the key automatically and unlocked the front door. Bo? My dad called from the living room. Yeah, dad, it's me. I locked the door and then went to find him. He was on his favourite couch. A baseball game on the TV. Movie over so early. Is it early? It seemed like I've been with her for days. Or maybe just a few seconds. Not long enough. It's not even eight yet, he told me. Was the show any good? I'm uh, not very memorable, really. What is that around your neck? I grabbed the scarf I'd forgotten and tried to yank it off. 
but it was wrapped too many times around my neck and I just choked myself. I totally forgot that Bo has no idea how to use a scarf. Oh my god. <laughs> that is one of the best parts of this book so far. The Bo doesn't know how to use a scarf. He doesn't understand it. <sighs> I forgot a coat and someone lent me a scarf. It looks goofy. Yeah, I figured. But it's warm. You okay? You look kind of pale. Am I always kind of pale? Guess so. Actually, <sighs> hello. This is Felice, whose spikes do not stay inside her feet. Do they? She's the most beautiful cat, but I kind of messed her up. I got her when I was 16, and I don't know. I was too young to be raising a kitten. Anyway, she's super neurotic. Like, one time when we got another cat, can you see her? How beautiful she is. Because mm. when we got another cat or dog or something, pissed her off anyway. And she pulled all the fur out of her tummy. And we didn't know what she was doing. So we took her to the vet. And the vet was like, oh, yeah, your cat is self-harming. And we were like, oh, shit. She learned it from watching me. <laughs> anyway, she's going to sit on my leg. Take her little anchors in. And rely on my love for her to keep her safe. Yeah. Oh, great. God's sake. Yes, for God's sake, little girl. Uh, actually, my head was starting to spin a little, and I was still cold. Though I knew the room was warm. Wouldn't it be just like me if I did end up going into shock? Get a grip. <laughs> Get a grip. I, um, I didn't sleep great last night. I said to Charlie, I think I'm going to hit the sack early. Night, kid. <laughs> this is the most interaction they've had in quite a while. I walked up the stairs slowly, a sort of stupor starting to cloud my mind. I had no reason to be so exhausted. Or so cold. I brushed my teeth and splashed some hot water on my face. It made me shiver. I didn't bother changing, just kicked off my shirt then... Climbed into the bed fully dressed. The second time in a week. I wrapped my quilt tightly around me and fought through a couple of small shudders. What is going on with him? Is this a really weird euphemism? My mind swirled like I was dizzy. It was full of impressions and images. Some I wished I could see more clearly. And some I didn't want to remember at all. The road whipping by too fast. The dim yellow light at the restaurant glinting in her metallic hair. The shape of her lips when she smiled. And when she frowned. Jeremy's eyes bugging half out of his head. The headlights screaming towards me. The gun pointed at my face while cold sweat beaded on my forehead. My bed shook under me as I shivered again. If that is a euphemism, he's got a really weird go-to scenario. No, there were too many things I wanted to remember. I wanted to cement into my head. To waste time with the unpleasant stuff. I pulled the scarf I was still wearing up over my nose and inhaled her scent. Almost immediately my body relaxed, the tremors stilling. I pictured her face in my head, every angle, every expression, every mood. There are a few things I knew for sure. For one, Edith was an actual vampire. For another, there was a part of her that saw me as food. But in the end, none of that mattered. All that mattered was that I loved her. More than I'd ever imagined it was possible to love anything. She was everything I wanted. The only thing I would ever want. The end of the chapter. So a certain amount of things happened, but... But not really anything. So we are... I don't know if you can see that. That little black line marks life and death from uh, Twilight. 
So my bookmark says we're not really halfway there. Uh, nothing exciting has happened, basically. There's been quite a boring conversation in the car. And I guess Bo kind of got to hold Edith's hand for a little bit. Uh, and then they went home again. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will definitely get on to more videos, but, um, God, I am warning you, it is such a struggle. <sighs> I'm trying to remember if there's anything good in Twilight that comes up. Good, you know, interesting, remotely interesting that comes up soon, but. Oh, actually, yeah, maybe, because I think Bella comes and meets his family. So that could be interesting, seeing the, you know, bizarro versions of... Oh god, what am I saying? That could be interesting. Alright, I'm gonna go. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and thank me very much for doing them. <laughs> okay, bye everyone.